delicious. to my parlor, said the spider to the fly. Tis the prettiest little parlor that ever you did spy. The way into my parlor is up a winding stair, and I have many pretty things to show once you are there. Oh no. <laughs> Said the little fly. To ask me is in vain. For who goes up your winding stair could never come out again. You must be very weary, dear. With soaring up so high. Will you rest upon my little bed? Said the spider to the fly. The curtains are all drawn around. The sheets are nice and thin. And if you'd like to rest a while, I'll snugly tuck you in. Oh no, no said the little fly. But I've often heard it said, I never, never wake again with those who sleep upon your bed. My dear friend, what can I do to prove the warm affections I have always felt for you. I have within my pantry a good store of wool that's nice. I am sure you are welcome. Will you please do take a slice? No, no, no said the little fly. Kind said that cannot be. I've heard what's in your pantry, and I do not wish to see. Sweet creature, said the spider. You are witty, and you're wise. How handsome are your gauzy wings. How brilliant are your eyes. I have a little looking glass upon my Parlor shelf. If you come in one moment, dear, you shall behold yourself. I thank you, gentle sir, she said, for what you're pleased to say, and bidding you good morning now. I'll call another day. The spider turned himself round about and went into his den, for well he knew the silly fly would soon be back again. So he wove a subtle web in a little corner sly, and set his table ready to dine upon the fly. 
Then he come out his door again, and merrily did he sing. Come hither, hither, pretty fly, with the pearl and silver wings. Your robes are green and purple. There's a crest upon your head. Your eyes are like the diamond bright, but mine are dull as lead. Alas, alas, how very soon the silly little fly, hearing his wily flattering words, came slowly flitting by, with buzzing wings she hung aloft, the near and nearer drew, thinking only of her brilliant eyes and green and purple hue, thinking only of her crested head. Poor foolish little thing, at last up jumped the cunning spider, and fiercely held her fast. He dragged her up his winding stair, into his dismal den within his little parlor, but she ne'er came out again. And now, dear little children, who may this story read? But your idle, silly, flattering words, I pray you never give heed unto any old counselor, cold heart, and ear, and eye, and take a lesson from this tale of the spider and the fly. Oh, <laughs> my